All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this ThinkPad P1. All right, so first thing we're gonna need is a PH or JS1 screwdriver, and we're gonna remove all the screws from the bottom. There's a little reset button hole here. If you use a small needle or like a SIM card removal tool kind of thing, you can press that about 10 to 15 seconds if you're having issues with your computer turning on. Sometimes that will help. It didn't work in this case. Um, you can also try pressing and holding the power button 10 to 15 seconds and see if that will help. But that didn't work, so we're going to open this up and see if we can find anything in here that's wrong with it. Alright, we're going to try disconnecting the battery. Sometimes that will help. And then we'll also see if RAM or anything like that is loose. Alright, so I'm doing all the screws. All these screws actually stay locked in place to the cover, so you don't need to rip them out. You just need to undo the screws. All right, so once we do that, we're going to get underneath the cover, okay? Just like that. I just got my fingernails underneath. You can use a pry tool, whatever works for you, okay? So I'm just going around here, and this cover comes up pretty easily. I'm pretty sure there's little feet under this part of the cover, so you ha once you lift it up like this, you kind of slide it up like that, and then you can pull it out. So there we go. We got the bottom cover off. came out pretty easily. The computer looks nice and clean inside, so it's pretty strange that it's not working. Um, but what we're going to do is disconnect the BIOS or CMOS battery. Let me zoom in here. So this saves like BIOS settings and the real-time clock. Some people call it the RTC or real-time clock battery, right? Or BIOS or CMOS. So we'll disconnect that. Um, here you can see the physical button that was through that little pinhole that we were talking about pressing. And then we also got the actual battery connector here. So let's go ahead and peel this adhesive out of the way and we're going to go ahead and disconnect this as well. So this battery connector here, um, it's this style where you kind of like go from underneath here of the connector and you pull this up slightly. So once you pull that up, you can slide this over, okay? And then you slide that over and you can lift it out. So there we go. We got the battery disconnected. I'm going to put this piece of adhesive here just to prevent the battery from reconnecting on its own on accident. And then I'm gonna press and hold this battery or this button 10 to 15 seconds. Um, we'll see if that helps. And then we'll also try with the power button itself. So I'll do this about 15 seconds. All right. So I'll give this a oh, press and hold. And then I'm gonna open up the laptop, press and hold the power button 10 to 15 seconds. Um, but probably most of you guys are here just for like the RAM and SSD. It looks like there's two slots. Let me zoom out, I'll show those in a bit. Um, but yeah, there are two slots for SSDs here. You do wanna peel off this yellow stuff if you do put a second SSD. This is a thermal pad. All right, so we press and held that for about 10 to 15 seconds. We're gonna do the same thing with the power button on the inside. All right, just to drain any power from the motherboard. If this doesn't work, then it's very likely it's a bad motherboard and we're going to end up having to either see if we can repair the motherboard or replace it. All right. So I'll hold this for about 15 seconds as well. All right. It's probably good enough. All right. If that doesn't work, then, well, let's check the RAM and everything else as well. So the RAM here, there's this plastic flap over it. You just pull these two tabs here to the sides. The RAM pops up and then you can pull the stick of RAM out. So the RAM here is 16 gigs, PC4, 2666V. Sorry, it's blurry. You can upgrade this with whatever RAM you want. Just make sure it's PC4, 2666V and you shouldn't have any issues. All right. So we'll take the RAM, we'll put it back in. So to put that, you put it back at the angle like that in the slot. And then while you're kind of pushing it in, just flop that down. Same thing with the other side. I'm gonna pop these out just in case these are the issue. And it helps sometimes to clean the pins like that. Some people are like, don't do that. You're gonna contaminate them and stuff. But I've had a lot of computers where the RAM is bad. I just clean it like that and then they work perfectly fine. And they go, they work fine for a long time. So these are actually, gold plated so doing that kind of thing the oils from your finger shouldn't really affect it much I mean people wear gold jewelry and they don't worry about it getting all corroded and stuff so anyways if you're gonna mess with the LCD or LVDS connectors here so this is the LCD LVDS connector um, you want to be careful to disconnect the battery at least the main battery you don't have to disconnect this one and press and hold the uh, power button 10 to 15 seconds if you don't do that you could fry the circuit here all right, so anyways, we're gonna leave this. I'm gonna just actually 
flip up all these latches and then just make sure the connections are tight. Put the, um, the flaps or the connections back down. You got the charge port DC jack connector here. So this is removable, all right? There's just this connector here. This one, you kind of just pull it back. Usually I'll like wiggle it as I pull it, um, but I'm gonna leave it for now because it does detect the charger. But if you do need to replace it, there's two screws here to remove this metal plate and then you can take it out. You might have to also take out the hinge um, screws and then lift the hinge slightly but most likely you can do it with just taking that out. All right, you got a fan connector here. You got the speaker connector here. You got this, I'm not sure what that's for. I'm gonna actually take the screws out there just to see what it looks like underneath. Um, I'm not gonna lift the whole battery out completely just because the speaker wire is going across it and then I'd have to unthread all of that. Um, but anyways, the battery model number is here if you need that, L17C4P72. Um, you'll want to check yours as well. Just open it up and check. It's pretty easy to get inside this laptop. So I would highly recommend checking yours just in case you have a different setup. I've had some where they'll have hard drives like on part of the area where the battery is on this model. Um, so you want to check and make sure yours is the same. Keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. All right, let's go ahead and lift up this battery slightly. All right, so here you can see the speaker connector is holding in there. All right, so that cable is going down here. Here you can see it connects to the keyboard connector here. And then there's this connector here. I believe that's for the little middle um, track point rubber thing. And then you see the trackpad touch point, um, touchpad connector there. And you got the fingerprint sensor connector here. All of those have those little flip latches. Okay, I'm gonna put the battery back in place. There we go. Let's put the screws back in. Um, this is a M.2. I believe it's, let's see, let me confirm. Yes, it's a PCIe NVMe SSD. I don't know if both slots support PCIe NVMe or not. Um, so if you wanted to check, you can try moving the SSD down to this slot just to see if it works properly. If it does, then you know for sure it supports PCIe NVMe and then you can get another um, PCIe NVMe SSD. Let's see, am I putting this one wrong? Where is that? Right. Okay, so I might have put moved the wrong. There's one shorter screw. Oops. Okay, then I put that in the wrong spot. I believe is it shorter or it was just my eyes? Um, I don't know. But if there is a shorter screw, I believe it goes on the far left. Usually I keep track, but then I was getting distracted by talking about other stuff. So anyways, it looks like these sides, the screw mounts are further down. So I'm putting the longer screws here. I think I swapped the two outer screws. All right. So I'm going to put back all these screws. All right. Again, there's the M.2 PCIe NVMe. This might be a M.2 SATA or might be a PCIe NVMe as well. So again, you want to check that. You got the wireless card here, just one screw. It pops up like the RAM. Same thing with the uh, SSD, and then you can pull it out. These antennas, you just pull up from the tails to pop them out. Um, I have a lot of videos that show that. I'll show one antenna, but basically I just do this, pop it up, and there you go. And for some reason, they put the gray wire to the black triangle, and then they put the black wire to the white triangle. So it's kind of confusing, but keep that in mind if you do remove this. All right, get the antenna lined up. You can tell it's lined up because if you move your finger over the top, it won't move. And then you can go ahead and push it down. You'll feel a snap. Um, this connector here, I believe, is for the webcam because I don't think this is touchscreen. So this is most likely for the uh, camera. Everything else seems to be soldered down to the board. There's another um, fan connector there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna try and plug in the charger while the battery is disconnected. Sometimes that will get it to turn on. So let's see if that works or not. We're gonna plug, oops, let me zoom out. All right, so we're gonna plug in the charger now. If it was doing what it was doing before, yeah, this the light just blinks three times, so it looks like it's going to be definitely a motherboard issue. Let's try and power it on, and 
yep, nothing happens. So definitely looks like there's a motherboard issue on this one because we did try the power reset. We tried battery reset. Let's go ahead and plug back in the CMOS or BIOS battery. Just get that lined up, push that in. We're going to put back the battery. The battery to put it back in is basically the opposite of what we did to take it out. So you slide it over slightly, okay? Get these wings to go into the slot, then you can slide it back, all right? Slide it back that way, and then push this back into place. There we go. All right, we're gonna put this adhesive back on top. Again, it does look like a motherboard issue. Um, I'm going to have to see if my partner can fix the board or not. Um, I don't see anything obvious. I don't see any obvious signs of damage on this board. Um, other than this stuff looks kind of gross. I don't know what's going on with that, but that's, I think that's just they sprayed the glue and it left some residue on it. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't really see much else. So anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys with your issues. If you had wanted to upgrade something or if you just had that power issue and that fixed it. Um, so let's go ahead and put back the cover. So the cover again, because of these little metal feet that stick out like here. Okay, you want to have the cover lifted like this, put that side in, slide it down first, and then just flop it down. You can go ahead and kind of snap all of this back together, and then put all the screws back in. So, pretty straightforward. Hopefully this video helped you guys again. If it did, please like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can also benefit. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Alright, you're welcome to stay as I put back all the screws. But that's pretty much all there is to this, all right? Make sure everything is snapped in, looks good. All right, I'll see you all later. Bye.